Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the workflow for the tile and random skin gen tools that come with the premium version of skin gen. Alright, so we're going to talk about where you can find them, how you can use them, and just a basic introduction to the workflow. It's important to note that the showcases demonstrated here use paid content with skin gen premium. Okay, so let's start off in the content manager. You can go over here up to your skin and down to the skin gen tools. All right. And under Skin Gen Tools, you will find a couple of different uh, sections here. We're going to talk about the Generator section, which is where you can find your tile and your random tools. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply this tile tool to our character on the screen right now. Okay, and we are going to apply it to the head because I'm just going to demonstrate the different uh, sections here. We're going to introduce the different sections to you here. Okay, so that'll pop right over our skin base in our layers. And I'll go to Tile here and let's just uh, minimize all of these uh, sections here. Go through them one by one. The first section is the layer mask. Okay. Uh, first of all, you can also use the opacity to, uh, of course, um, adjust the uh, visibility of the uh, tile there. The first section we're going we're to take a look at is the layer mask. Okay, this is where you can mask. Uh, you can only apply it to certain areas of the face if you want to mask it. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. The texture settings. Okay, you can uh, adjust the texture here. You can see this is the texture map that we have currently applied to our character's head. Nothing too complicated about that. And your basic transform tools so you can tile um, have uh, less or more tiling just like this okay if you want to have it more intense or uh, or less intense you can do that there's also the uh, x and y offset okay so you can uh, offset it x and y on the various uh, axes there and then there's also rotation as well okay so if you want to rotate it um, so all kinds of ways you can randomize it i'll just make the tiling a little bit more there and uh, that's your basic transform Okay, and after that we have materials. Okay, so you can adjust the color. Uh, here you can adjust the opacity separately as well, just like the opacity at the top. Okay, um, you can make it really extreme or, or less extreme. There's also the option to change the color if you want. You can change it to something like a nice uh, blue. Okay, and you get a result like this. And you can darken it or lighten it. All right, let's change it back to a nice uh, kind of warm color, whatever we had there. Okay, that looks kind of cool. Um, another cool option here that uh, is very important for tiling is the blur. Okay, so if you increase the uh, the blur value, say for example you want you don't want it to look look too distinct. You want to have it a little bit more blurred. Uh, you can use the blur value to adjust that um, to make it seem a bit more natural. Uh, you know, naturally blended into your character's skin. And there's other ways we can do that, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, expansion is fairly self-explanatory. You can expand the uh, the pattern just like this. Okay. Um, you can adjust it to whatever sort of values you want and, uh, you know, increase or decrease the blur to get, uh, you know, spots like this. If you wanted age spots on your character, for example, this would be an, an easy way to do that. Just uh, decrease the level of expansion and there you go. Okay, for like an older character or something. And you can also increase the contrast uh, to make them, you know, more contrast, higher contrast, and just reduce that. Um, it's the opposite of blur, basically. You can balance those. Of those two uh, items right there. Let's just expand it a little bit more here um, and decrease the blur just so we get something a bit more recognizable. Okay, and on top of that, there are the general settings. Okay, projection blend. This is kind of used to um, basically, if there's any sort of uh, seams on the, on the pattern that seem to be like, you know, kind of just not blending together properly, you can use projection blend. It'll kind of blur those areas together um, just to make it seem that if there's like you're not just projecting a sort of uh, texture map on top. Like you see the seam up here at the top there. So with a zero projection blend, you can see that seam very distinctly. If we uh, decrease that, you can see the result right there. Okay, so you can just balance that however you choose. Let's delete this one on the head now. So we can right click it and just uh, delete. And let's go to the body material. And we're going to apply one to the body now. So once we're in the body material, we can go over to the content manager and just double click on tile and it'll apply now to the body. And so we'll uh, scroll down here. You can see he has a nice weird uh, uh, pattern on his chest there. Uh, what we're going to try and do here is we're going to blend this in nicely to create sort of almost like a discoloration or rash on his chest. Um, and we're going to use the tile for that as well. So in this case, what we're going to do, let's just minimize everything. We'll go one by one again here. The first thing we're going to start with is the texture settings. So I'm going to change my pattern from this to something a bit uh, a bit less distinct. Okay, this let a bit less sharp. Okay, and to do that, we'll go into our main folder here for Skin Gen. Uh, we'll just go to Pattern and we'll go to Miscellaneous here. And there's a couple of noise patterns down here, like this Noise PT01. Uh, if we use that, you'll see it'll change distinctly and it'll look more like a rash. Now you can see there's still the sharp edges along there, which we'll talk about in just a moment. 
But I first want to take a look at how we can make this appear more like a discoloration on the uh, chest there. Okay, so from that, we're going to go to down to transform. Uh, not much to, uh, to adjust here. You know, you can tile it uh, more, or you can tile it less. Okay, if you want it to be a bit more like uh, patchy, you can have it less tily. Okay, so you can see it seems a bit more patchy now on the chest there. Um, rotation and, and uh, offset aren't really going to matter in this case. So we'll just go down to uh, the next one, which is material. Okay, and the material here, you can change the color if you want. You can increase that opacity to make it, you know, now you can see it a bit more distinctly. Um, you know, if you wanted to have like like burns or something, this would be a, a good way to do that on your character. Um, we can adjust the blur, okay, to make it a bit more blurry. In this case, I, li I kind of like the noise um, pattern. Uh, so we'll keep the blurring down to a minimum there. And the expansion, you can see the result right there, okay. The expansion is one of the most useful sliders that you can use for this type of uh, um, project. Uh, and then there's the contrast. In this case, you probably wouldn't want some super high contrast. Okay, you probably want a little bit of contrast possibly. But uh, let's just take that expansion down a slight bit there. Okay, nothing too crazy. And maybe even blurred a little bit more there. So we want to blend it in, blend it in slightly and decrease that opacity there. Okay, we don't want it to be too crazy. Uh, so let's go down from material to general settings here. And there, again, there's the projection blend. Okay, it's not going to really matter in this case. Um, since we don't really have too many seams in this pattern, it's very hard to tell where the seams would be. Okay, even here you can kind of almost tell like right here there's a little bit of a seam on the top chest there but keep your projection blend you know to a minimal level and you shouldn't be able you shouldn't have a problem with that now the one thing we want to address here is the seams along the chest there the seams between the different materials there so let's go up and um, we're going to go to our layer mask now and I'm going to double click on the layer mask and in the same skin gen main, main folder we have skin gen uh, layer mask and we're going to go not to head we're going to go to body and there is one for the chest, okay? Skin noise uh, chest here you can see right here. So if we apply that, now you can see it's uh, nice and blended in um, to, on the edges. And it looks a, little bit, a bit better. And then we can go and tweak it if we want. We can increase the opacity to see, you know, to get this sort of result there. And it's you can see it's focused on the area that is, uh, that is masked in the, uh, or that is not masked rather, using our layer mask there. Okay, so that's a really cool way you can use the, uh, the tile um, tool along with the layer mask and a custom material. Let's take a look at the random tool now. Okay, so the companion to the tile tool is the random tool. For this, we'll go back up to the head here. And what I'm going to do for the random tool is we're going to go up to our head material and we're going to apply that random tool to our head. So we'll go to our content manager and again just uh, double click on random and that'll apply to the head. Okay, so the random tool is kind of funky. You can see all sorts of weird shapes that appear on our character's head. Um, these are just for show. So we can go ahead and click on our random layer there. And let's uh, minimize all the, all the sections here. And we'll go through this one by one as well. And then after that, I'll show you how to customize the different uh, patterns. Okay, so layer mask, very, very similar to the, uh, the tool, uh, the previous tool, the tile tool. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, general settings, again, this one's a little bit more complicated because we have types. We have a random or uniform type, okay? So if we select uniform, it's gonna take our first pattern. Uh, we go down here, here's our patterns, okay? Pattern one, pattern two, and pattern three. If you use uniform, it's going to just take a uniform pattern of the first, uh, first uh, pattern there. Or uniform distribution of the first pattern, rather. Okay, so let's go to uh, back to random here. Um, projection mode, we have UV, which is on a single UV, and then there's triplanar. So you can see with triplanar, some of the uh, shapes are kind of faded out a little bit and some of them are, are stronger. Triplanar is used if you have some sort of like the same the same issue if you have those uh, those seam uh, issues. Okay, projection blend, you can kind of blend it in a bit more uh, in various areas here. Uh, and just, you know, try and keep a balance of this. Uh, every, every, every pattern is going to be different, obviously. So there's no real 100% correct template uh, to do this. Okay, so those are our general settings. And again, basically projection blend and triplanar are used as uh, combined methods to avoid visible seams in your projection, okay? Um, so let's go down to our uh, pattern here. You can see we have patterns. We can select uh, pattern one. We can maybe choose two patterns or we can choose a single pattern. And for all the patterns, we have uh, sections down here as well we can adjust. Let's take it back up to maybe uh, two, for example. Okay, so two, we have this hollow shape and we have this filled in shape. Okay, you can see them randomly distributed. Uh, and of course, they're the same transform values, essentially. Uh, we have tile, we can tile it more. Okay, so you can have all sorts of cool funky shapes or it'll tile it a lot less. Um, and of course, offsets, X offset, Y offset, um, your basic stuff. I don't need to go through that too much, I think. Um, but for 
random for the random tool we have a couple we have a section down here that is different from the tile so we have pattern scale okay we can adjust the pattern scale um, this is slightly different we have scale variation which is very important when you're using that random stuff okay so less variation means they're all going to be the same size if you have more variation it means they're going to be like uh, much more different sizes so you can see the smaller pattern right there uh, larger pattern right there um, we'll just kind of keep that uh, somewhere around here maybe a uh, middle of the road there 0 0.5 okay and there's a position disorder as well so you can adjust this is kind of just randomly moving them around if you find um, you know seams are showing up and it doesn't it looks too uniform you can use position disorder here um, pattern rotation fairly simple we're rotating everything there uh, rotation variation okay this is going to just simply adjust the variation of the rotation again um, random remove this is very important if you take down the random remove you're going to fill your face with patterns okay uh, random remove you can randomly remove them at various intervals and uh, you know get less um, the more removal you have the less patterns are going to show up on your on your character's face and then there's also opacity variation okay just like this um, if we want zero opacity variation they're all going to be very strong we can combine that with like zero projection as well so under the projection blend looks like this you can see the seams very very apparent right there uh, the seams so we want to probably take that up a little bit and get a result like this okay and uh, you know it's used for stuff like uh, cheetah stripes or cheetah spots or whatever you know uh, and then there's random seats so where are they going to be placed okay it's placed randomly on the face um, pretty straightforward stuff okay down here we have the option for uh, two different colors so we can change the primary color uh, right now we have a single color we can change that to duo colors okay uh, we can change the secondary color to something like uh, blue we can change the primary color to something like red so they're very different okay so you can see the blues and the reds we can adjust the blend weight so if we want more blues uh, we can do that okay so you can see the result right there blue is taking over and then red is taking over um, the opacity value again for uh, both patterns we can increase that opacity or decrease it blur it out and of course expansion probably the most important one you can also use expansion along to, to blend along your uh, your areas there as well um, what I want to do is increase the opacity here and I'm going to change these colors back to a kind of a dark brownish color All right, so we'll just take that and maybe take it down here secondary color primary color we'll take it down to something like this here okay and we will just use a single color for this example because I want to show you next what's uh, what is the normal strength okay so down here we have the uh, um, and here's a blend mask if we if we were using a blend mask the blend mask will only be enabled once dual color mode is active um, down here is materials and material blur and normal strength this is something I want to show you so we're gonna zoom in for this here let's try and find something like on the cheek here this is a good example okay so we have these two uh, spots right here if we want to invert our normal what's gonna happen basically it's gonna it's gonna appear like those um, those cheek uh, those spots are inverted into the skin as opposed to popping out of the skin we can also increase our texture resolution to like 496 and that'll give us a bit less edginess along the uh, since we're zoomed in really close here that'll give us a bit less edgi edginess around the uh, spots there so again invert normal if we deselect that let's increase our normal strength to maybe a value of uh, take it up to like uh, three or something like this and normal expansion we can increase that as well and now if I, I can also increase the blur so if we increase the blur it's a lot easier to see let's maybe take that down to a value of like 0 0.25 for example and now you can see if we invert the normal it's going to be a lot more noticeable so now it seems like it's kind of going into the skin as opposed to out of the skin uh, so if you wanted to create like sort of a mole for example you could use this and invert the normal and uh, maybe increase the blur to like 0 0.4 and then you can have a very apparent uh, mole on your character's face and there's also the option down here for glow as well you can enable that you can make it glow <laughs> whatever color you want okay you want to create sort of a cool cyborg effect or a glowing mole for example you can go ahead and do that i'm going to take that off for now though okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to reset everything down here okay and that'll take us back to all of our default values i'll change our texture size back to 2048 since it's a little bit faster to operate and what I'm going to do now is try to create uh, capillaries on our character's cheek, okay? Uh, to do that, we're going to change both of the patterns. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, it's kind of similar to the capillary effect that you can get with the uh, 
other skin gen packs. Um, so let's go ahead here and uh, let's focus right now on the patterns. We're only going to use two, uh, two patterns in this case. So let's uh, replace pattern one. I'm going to double click that and replace it. For this, we're going to go back to a miscellaneous here. And we have these kind of lightning patterns, although they're they're called capillaries. You could use them for lightning on the face, I guess. Okay, we use capillary one here and capillary two. So let's go back to patterns and uh, miscellaneous. Capillary two. There you go. Okay, so same thing. We have, uh, you know, now we have these kind of lightning bolts, aka capillaries, all over our character's face, and we can adjust the the uh, scale of these. Okay, so uh, lower scale or a higher scale, uh, tile them more, tile them less. Okay, we can create a cool scar like this if we wanted to, like a cool lightning scar, like you know, some kind of Harry Potter thing or something. Uh, and, and again, there's all all the other transform values there. Um, general settings. Uh, we're gonna try planar this one. Okay, just because I always like to try planar it. Um, projection blend not going to have much of an effect in this case since our our veins are kind of uh, small right now. Uh, we're not going to worry about the layer mask. Let's go down to um, random here, and we're going to uh, increase the pattern scale there. Uh, scale variation. Um, what I want to do here is uh, have the uh, color under color here. We're going to change it to uh, duo color, and I have a couple of values here. So our primary color, we're going to change this one to. A nice uh, kind of red, maybe. Okay, a deep red, maybe a little bit lighter than that. Okay, we can always adjust the opacity and everything later. So now you can see those look like real veins. Let's change the secondary color to like something a bit more blue, maybe like a taupe uh, kind of aqua color like this. Okay, just like that. And you can't see the secondary color as much, but if we change the uh, value here, the blend weight, there you can see it's a bit more uh, significant. Okay, and let's expand those as well. So just to make them a bit more apparent. So we can see them better. Random remove if you want, of course, more veins on the face. The way to get that is with random remove, okay? And that's, you know, fairly veiny, all right? We don't want to worry too much. We don't want to have that many veins on our character's face. Okay, um, maybe something like a value of 0.5 would do. And then, of course, we can uh, adjust the scale there as well. Take that slightly down. And uh, we can adjust the, uh, the other stuff later. Um, but the last thing I want to do is mask this out to the cheek, okay? Just like we masked out to the uh, to the chest earlier, let's go to our layer mask here and open up our layer mask. And this time we're going to go to layer mask and head, and we have one specifically for the cheeks, specifically for capillaries on the head there, okay? So let's go ahead and apply that. And now you can see those capillaries are focused on the cheek area, okay, where they should be. And of course you can do things now like uh, adjust the opacity, the overall opacity if you want. Let's take, take that down slightly. You know, um, maybe you don't want it to be super high. That's a good, good quick and easy way to adjust that. Um, of course you can also go down to the material section here and you can, you can blur it a little bit. Make it not so uh, distinct on, on the face there. Okay, maybe something like this. And uh, and of course, randomize it, adjust the normal strength. Um, but the rest is pretty much all arbitrary, whatever you want to do. Um, you can adjust the projection blend a little bit less if you want to make it a bit more apparent. Okay, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, you can just blend in various different ways. But overall, what you want to go, what you want to do is you want to go for a fairly subtle look. Okay, so you can always decrease the opacity as well, just slightly. Um, and then what you want to do is layer on top of that. You can layer more capillaries. You can layer moles on top of that using the tiling tool that I just showed you and all the other fun stuff. So that's really about all I wanted to show you guys um, for the random and the tile tools. You can use these tools in a lot more creative ways like what you see on the screen here, but I just wanted to show you the basics. Um, so I just wanted to thank you so much for watching and I hopefully you learned a lot. Make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com and I hope to see you in the next video.